I recently spoke with a lady who went from family dollar to working a federal government job in about four months. She first started working at Bed Bath & Beyond and then over the years transitioned to family dollar. This is the reality for millions of people across the country. And simply put, it's because it's the only show in town. There's many cities and towns where you might have a Walmart, a few restaurants, and the rest of it is just retail. So you go ahead and get a job at a young age. You start earning about $10 an hour, and they slowly give you these incremental pay raises, and you start to think, how high can I go? Can I get into management? And then you stay there for years. And before you know it, it's been 10 or 15 years, you're not building up towards a pension. You're not really unlocking the benefits that can enhance your life. So unless you know people that are in the government, whether they be family or friends, if you don't know someone in the government, most people, they don't even know it's an opportunity. It's just a passing thought in their head, if they think of it at all. The lady I was talking to is 37 years old right now. She started retail at 15, but she didn't just stay in one position. She started off as a cashier and then she moved up, you know, to be a shift supervisor, an assistant manager, an assistant store manager. And ultimately she reached district manager. She was there for six years. As a store manager, she was working between 70 and 80 hours in a week, one week. Unfortunately, this is not uncommon when you're looking at retail management. They will abuse their employees because they're on salary. And salary oftentimes is what, 60, 65, 70,000 a year? And they feel like they can make you work twice as hard as everyone else. Usually, 40 hours is considered a full week. That's what it's considered in the government. But in the private side, oftentimes the expectation is a lot more than that. Many times in the government, you can't work over 40 hours a week. If you want to work 41 hours, you have to submit a request. You have to get approval to for them to let you work. So for you to work 80 hours for a salary, you have to think about it at a certain point and say, there's a premium attached to my time. There's competing priorities attached to my time. I'm not just going to give it up to a corporation that's making its shareholders rich, that's making their CEO rich. My time is valuable and I'm not gonna be working 80, 90 hours a week. But she said it wasn't all bad in retail. She enjoyed being considered the subject matter expert and also seeing people rise through the ranks. And she was involved in training for a lot of these individuals as they were moving themselves from cashier to middle management. And that can be life-changing money if you think about, you know, your average small town, let's say you start off making $10 an hour, $15 an hour, and then all of a sudden you take a, a lower management role and now you're making 50, 60,000. Well, now you can buy a car. Now maybe you can upgrade your apartment. So yeah, that does impact people's lives in a big way. What she didn't like about retail, she was feeling stressed. She was feeling burned out. And there's a churn. People come and go, come and go, come and go. So you always have to worry about backfilling managers that are threatening to quit. Her phone would be ringing and then she has to be talking to these managers wondering, are they really going to quit? Who am I going to fill in that position? So the whole thing was a giant stress ball. As a district manager, she did manage 13 other family dollar stores. So there was a lot of uh, HR involved with that, right? So when it comes to training when it comes to uh, doing the performance appraisals, things of that nature, she was heavily involved in that. This is one of the reasons why she started applying to the 0301 job series. The series covers a lot of that administrative type of work. Now, when it comes to getting into the government, what do people always say? People are always saying, well, you gotta know somebody. Who do you know? Are you gonna meet somebody? Who do you know on the inside? Well, in her circumstance, she knew somebody on the inside. It was a lady that she went to high school with when she was 15 years old, all those years back. But the thing with this is that lady, she didn't really help her get a government job. She didn't introduce her to a hiring manager. In fact, she wouldn't even share her resume with her. She gave her a couple of tips. One of the tips, in my opinion, was the wrong answer. And that tip was just accept a low GS grade. Just come in as a GS5. 
and then you'll, you'll work your way up. So don't even worry about it. That's how everybody does it. That's what she was saying. Now, thankfully, she didn't listen to that advice. I don't think her friend meant anything wrong by saying that. But what probably happened is that's exactly how her friend got her job. Her friend got a GS5 and she worked her way up. But you have to understand that this lady already has 20 plus years of experience. She didn't have to take a GS5. If she were to apply and accept a GS5, she would be taking like a, a $50,000 a year pay cut. So that wouldn't have worked out. Now, when she got on the computer, she looked at usajobs.gov, completely confusing, completely daunting. It doesn't look like Indeed. It doesn't look like LinkedIn. There was so much information on there. She didn't take the time to look over it all. And for someone like me, I look at USA Jobs. I probably looked at it over a thousand times. So for me, it looks somewhat intuitive now that I look at it because I have so much experience dealing with it. But from somebody on the outside looking at it for the first time, it's clear to see why they would get lost. Now, her friend did have a piece of good advice. Her friend said, hey, listen, make sure your resume is matching what's on the job announcement. And that's 100% correct. You definitely need to do that. But the problem was the first few times she applied, she was using a civilian resume. So she was taking what worked at Bed Bath & Beyond, what worked in Family Dollar, and she was shooting that off to the government. That's not really going to get you desirable results, probably won't give you any results. So you had to make sure that you're using a strong federal resume when you're applying to those positions. Here are her results. Her resume was four pages. She applied to 44 jobs and she had three interview requests. The job offer actually came from the fourth application that she submitted. It just took a few weeks for it to actually come in. The job was for a GS 11 slash 12 program specialist. Now, this is great because it's a ladder position, right? She does 12 months as a GS 11 and then she can get into a GS 12. But one of the issues that I found with this, she didn't try to negotiate her step level. She just wanted to make the whole process as quick and seamless as it can be. Didn't want to put any obstacles in the way and she accepted it. A lot of people do this. A lot of people feel more comfortable doing it like this. What I recommend is everyone should at least try to negotiate one time. Negotiate your step level once. Because if you look at GS11, step one to step 10, you're looking at probably somewhere around $20,000 difference, give or take. Another interesting thing is that over 1,200 people applied to the job announcement she applied to. Over 1,000. And for some people, that's a little scary. They wouldn't want to apply because there's so much competition. But you have to understand, 60 locations were actually accepting and hiring people. So even though over 1,000 people applied for her office in her state, it wasn't really that many people. When they asked her to interview, they do the interview request email, there were six slots. She picked the first slot available. And her mentality was, I want the agency to evaluate everyone based off of me. I'm gonna put forth a strong performance and I'm basically gonna set the tone. They asked about six or seven questions, a lot of typical ones like, tell me about yourself. What do you know about the agency? There was also a written exercise she had to complete in a certain time. So the written exercise gives you certain instructions and it basically says, make sure that this font, that you're using this font, it's at this point, like 0.12 or whatever. So they, they want it formatted in a particular way and then you go ahead and you produce that document and you send it over before the deadline. Her formatting wasn't perfect, but it was good enough. So where does she go from here? Well, she's a GS 11. She's gonna wait the 12 months and get the GS 12. Now she wants to take some time off from supervising people. She's been supervising people for a very long time and she's not eager to jump right back into one of those leadership type roles, but she's she is considering moving up with probably a different agency. So stay as a GS-12, maybe give that a year or two, and then look at other opportunities in the same agency and also outside of that agency. If you are still interested in a federal government job, but you're wondering, will the salary be enough? Will I get paid enough in order to be able to afford a car and a house in your area? Is the salary going to be enough for you? If you're wondering about that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.